what is going on everyone and welcome in today's video we are going to be sharing with you how we unlock the gold camo very easily for the second pistol on the list which is for the 1911 now the 1911 is a high damage semi-automatic pistol and does have moderate recoil and as you can see there guys i have got a pistol grip artwork on I selected it, it looks really nice. And if you do want to select one yourself, there are many and plenty to choose from. You get them through supply drops and it's up to you which one you choose, but they range from common to rare to legendary to epic. And if you do want to select this through gameplay guys, and actually so you can see it through gameplay, there is a little tip I'm gonna give you now. If you hold your Y button down on Xbox One or Xbox X or triangle down on PS4, PS4 Pro, he will, your character, actually look at the pistol grip for you. You can do this with any weapon, guys, but it just looks nice to look at the pistol grip. Otherwise, you're never going to see it because his hand is covered over it. Just think that would be amazing if you'd done that just before you got a rapid kill on a heroic kill cam. I'm going to try that. I'm going to see if I can actually do it, and I'll share that video if I can do that for you. Now, back to the challenges. There are nine camo challenges we need to unlock first before the last five will unlock, as you know. They're getting 100 headshots now the headshots can be very difficult with pistols if you allow it but i'm going to give you my tips and tricks now on how i can make headshots very easy for you if you select any other division other than the mountain division you will be seen and you will be visible on the map if you take a look at the top left there guys the white cursor is bright now you can have airborne for an example which will make your gameplay a lot faster which is good for pistol which is fair enough there is a basic training perk that you can select with this, which is called Flanker. You can open it up at level 54 and it'll allow you to be invisible while you're moving. But you've got to be careful. I'm crouched here and I'm moving slow. And as you can see, that cursor is actually flickering, indicating that you're still slightly visible on the map. The only way that you're going to be completely invisible is to run at full pelt all the time. If that's something you like, guys, then do it. But as you can see here, I'm crouched, I'm moving slow, and it's flickering, indicating I'm still slightly visible on that. So you've got to be careful with that, but it is there as an option if you do want to use it. For headshots, I would recommend you go invisible always. You want silent movement as well, so we can sneak up, be stealthy, take that approach, and you'll find headshots come very easy. Mountain Division is the division that's going to allow you to do that, what I just said. So we're always going to be invisible to enemy recon with the Mountain Division, but not only that, we're not going to be having our big black boots stomping around on the map, alerting enemies to our presence. As you can see here now on the top left, that white cursor is very dim. We're crouched, we go prone. That's indicating now that we are always invisible on the map. I can slowly move, I can run, but I'm still invisible on the map. Listen at my big black boots, guys. You can't hear them anymore. That's going to help us also to sneak up behind the enemy and have the time to actually aim in at the enemy head to get that accurate headshot. So that is the division that I would recommend you have, guys. If you do want to have a little bit of quickness to it, because it's going to be a pistol. I didn't show the pistol, actually. It was just with a random weapon that I had. But I just wanted to show you on the map how we are to enemy. But if you do want to have a little bit of quickness to your gameplay, because we're using pistols, Energetic can help with this, because it will help you to sprint again sooner. So I chose that energetic basic training perk along with the mountain division. Now in regards to the attachments, the quick draw, to be honest, I mean it can help with getting your sights up a little bit faster, but I found with the 1911 that it is very quick getting your sights up as standard anyway, so I didn't really need it. The same with the steady aim. With pistols, they do have a good accuracy with hip fire anyway, so having the steady aim to help along to have better accuracy isn't really needed to be honest. Now, in regards to the high caliber, I did do a test on this with the per first pistol yesterday with the PO8, and to be honest, it really doesn't do anything. I took this into standard core mode because it's supposed to help with increased shot damage, but the, the headshot damage isn't really increased. All I was getting was hit markers, if you remember, guys. So it really doesn't do anything the high caliber. If you're taking it into hardcore, which I'm gonna recommend anyway, you don't need it because one shot to the head is gonna shoot that headshot anyway. Full Metal Jacket, this can be quite helpful. I didn't select it myself, but I'm just gonna show you a short video on how this can help you if you do wanna select this. What Full Metal Jacket is gonna do is allow you to pierce your bullets through surfaces such as walls and that kind of thing. So just as an example, I'm gonna show you how this works. And you can get that extra little kill. If you did have your standard bullets on, you know, it wouldn't have probably got that kill, but Full Metal Jacket will allow you to get that extra kill if an enemy is hiding behind a brick wall. Extended mag, really never found I needed it. To be honest, you've got seven 
bullets in that first clip anyway. It's only going to add another three to it. It really isn't worth it. So I didn't go with extended mags, but I did go with advanced rifling. This is the one attachment that I did select because you're only allowed one attachment with pistols. Now, advanced rifle, I'm going to show you a couple of clips now. The first clip is as the weapon is standard without the advanced rifling on. I'm on the Gibraltar map. I'm looking up at that little opening up the top there where many enemy camp. And you can see that I, even though I had the aim on, I didn't kill the enemy because the range was too short. This clip now, we're back to the same position to give a true test in how advanced rifling works. So now we've got the advanced rifling on. You can see now when the enemy appears at the top there at the opening to look down on us to try and shoot us. One shot, guys. The advanced rifling does the job and it gets that long shot kill. So that's why I selected the advanced rifle and over anything else, because it really needed that range. Now, in regards to the sensitivity, I had to change my vertical and horizontal sensitivity down from, from 14 to 12. With the pistols, they're very small, they're very minute, minute to use. And sometimes when you've got your aim up, when you're moving your right stick kind of right or left, it can flinch very quickly either way. And it's very jolty, very um, twitchy. So you just want to reduce it. And that putting it down to 12 did actually help with better accuracy with the aiming. Now, I'm going to select some good maps for you here, guys, and show you some of the good maps to get headshots on. The first one is the St. Marie Dumont map. This is great for getting headshots on. If you can get this map, it will really help you. It's got lots of locations here where you can catch the enemy out. You can sneak up behind them because of that lovely division and the basic training perk that we've got on. And you can actually have the time to aim it at the head. Another great point here is on point B. So at this point now, I'm going to recommend to you to use hardcore and always use domination for any challenges that you get. It's perfect, guys. Now, with domination, it's going to allow you to know where the enemy are most of the time, which really, really helps. When they're taking your points, when they're trying to capture them, that's where you're going to know where they are. You can go in, you can get that easy headshot, and it really makes sense. Now, another great map, believe it or not, for headshots is the USS Texas. This map is kind of um, infected with campers, okay? And I don't, you know, I've got nothing against that, guys. Most of the enemy players on here, or most of your teammates, will try and get your sniper rifle kills. It's a great map for that, so I don't blame them for camping. But that makes it easy for us when coming to pistol headshots because what we can do is flank around the side, get into the enemy spawns as I'm showing you here now. You'll be surprised what you can find when you're in that enemy spawn, guys. Remember, our division is helping us. We're always invisible. We're moving silently so they don't know where we are. And we can actually catch them out static at their end in the spawning, but we can also catch out those campers who are camping either end on those USS Texas points. Now... I'm going to show you so many clips, guys, where this really helps to show you that it does work. And again, you can just get headshot after headshot after headshot. On the USS Texas maps, when I play them, I can come away from here getting at least 10 to 13 headshots every single game. Don't forget the bridges as well. The bridges, campers are up there as well, and you can get easy headshots. Another great map, when you can get it, is the Gibraltar map. Now, the Gibraltar map, again, has some lovely locations for enemies to camp out. We're going to flank round the sides again. We're going to come up behind the enemy. And I'd always recommend you do this, guys, and go to those locations where you expect enemy to be. They will just be sitting there, making it easy for us to get those headshots. Look at this, guys. You can just rack the kills up. It doesn't matter what side you do this on. Either side of this, the enemies will come. But remember, our division, our basic training perk is helping us to get these headshots as well as the tactics that we're doing here, getting ourselves into enemy spawns. Again, I'm going to show you plenty of these clips, guys. And again, this isn't actually, even though I'm getting plenty of headshots here and I'm showing you these good locations, guys, and where to get them from, this isn't actually one of the best maps to get headshots on, even though it's looking pretty good. There is a better map that I'm going to say to you very shortly where you can just build up maybe 15 to 20 headshots a game because the map allows you to do it. But as you can see here, I mean, you know, play in domination. You can actually assess where the enemy are. Get up behind them because remember, they're going to be spawning at the point where they've already taken. Get in there, get those easy headshots. Another map, believe it or not, I don't really like this map too much. Um, it just takes ages to play, it seems like anyway, but is the Gustav cannon this little location here at point b you don't have to take it if you take it even better but wait for the enemy in this little point to have come up and i'll tell you what guys you'll get headshot after headshot after headshot they don't know we're there 
because we haven't, you know, if they have got a UAV, we won't be visible to them. We'll be invisible. We're not moving, so we're very silent. And you can actually just pick off those heads as they try and take that point. Remember, when you are defending your point or when you are stopping the enemy from taking that point, you get an extra points for it as well, for defending, for capturing. So it all makes sense. This is the best map, guys. The arching map for headshots. I've got so many clips I'm going to show you now, just as an example of why I like and prefer this map for headshots. First of all, though, you've got to get into this location of where I'm taking you. Again, your division that I've selected for you and recommend to you is going to allow you to do this. But capture your point B and come into these corners. There's two of them. There's this one, what I call side one. But in a minute, I'm going to show you side two. But wait again for the enemy to come into this point to take point B and you can actually have the time to aim in to get the headshots. It happens every single game, guys. And sometimes I've got headshots here with other weapons, three headshots, four headshots, and it's amazing. Again, we're still at what I call the side one. We've still got the enemy, and these are different games that I'm playing. Again, once you've got the headshots maybe once or twice in one game, the enemies start to kind of roughly know where you are. But um, again, you need to swap and change it a little bit, go around, get in the enemy spawn, get headshots other ways with the tactics. But again, you can see how this works. It really does make headshots easy, guys. You can come away from this archer map, like I said, getting maybe 15, even up to sometimes 20 headshots a game. Now I'm going to show you side two. So we've just taken that point B again. So that way then when we take the point, the enemy are more likely then to want to take it off you. But this is now what I call side two. I'm just camping out now on this little side two area. And again, the enemy will do the same thing. They'll come around that side from in front of you. We know where they're coming from because we've already taken point A, point B. So they're going to be spawning from point C. And they're going to be trying to come out to take point B here. And again, even what I call side two here, you can rack the headshots up, guys. It really makes sense. It is easy to do, anyone can do it. And because we've got that, you know, invisibility on, because of that division we've got, if an enemy do have a recon aircraft in, they're not gonna see us anyway. When we shoot, yes, they're gonna see us for a short while. But I mean, I can sit here all day and it's very rare the enemy spot me. But don't forget as well, guys, you know, get into the enemy spawns as well. There are other locations on the Archer map that I'm gonna show you now. This is one of them. But you can actually get them to these camping locations. You can have the time to aim in, look, guys. And you don't... Well, I did miss there on the first one because I was messing about. But it, and there's another headshot there. Two headshots straight away. But brilliant, guys. Hopefully that will help you with getting the 100 headshots out of the way quick. Right. Now we're going on to the M1916. Now this is going to require us to get 10 payback medals. Now this is a fairly easy challenge. With the pistol, you'll probably find that you'll get the payback medals without even sometimes knowing you get them. But that happens mostly with most weapons anyway. But all it means is that you need to be killed. You don't have to do it on purpose, but you'll have to be killed by an enemy. You go back to the same location to kill the enemy that killed you, and then you get your payback medal. You can actually get this challenge out of the way in probably about one, two games maximum, guys. There's only 10 payback medals you need to get. So we're now going back to the same location as where we died from, but the enemy were just going to take that point B anyway, and we get the easy payback medal. I don't need to go through that anymore, guys. It, you know, that's very straightforward. The snow camo. Now, I love this challenge. This is very, very easy. Getting five near-death kills. Now, in this video I'm going to show you here, I actually rack up four of them, okay, in one game. This is how easy it is. You have to get shot by an enemy. Now, you can't plan to do this. It just happens. But when you do get shot by an enemy, that's your chance. You can do this in hardcore, guys. It really is easy in hardcore. But you can see now that I've, because I've been shot by an enemy, I can, every shot I get now is going to be a near-death kill. And I actually end up getting four of them, leaving me only one more to get. But unfortunately, I didn't get it in this game. I had to wait to the next game to get it. But the same thing happened. Got them out of the way in two games. Now... I wouldn't recommend to take this into standard core mode because in standard core mode it will take the enemy to shoot you four times before you are near death. And also in standard core mode you will regenerate your health. So I would always recommend to take it into hardcore. It's very easy. You should get it out of the way. One, two games at the most, guys. Now the leopard camo. This is where we need to get five kills you know, with the pistol just while we're swapping our weapon. So you'll have a primary weapon attached. It doesn't matter what weapon, guys. Choose one of your best weapons if you want. But you're going to need to swap it. Now, to swap it, you're going to press your Y button on Xbox One or Xbox X. Triangle 
on PS4 or PS4 Pro and do it just before you know you're going to shoot an enemy, just like this guy. So I've got my primary attached. I know an enemy is now coming up here. So quickly swap it. It's quick to do, guys. Get your pistol out, shoot that enemy, and then it gives you one towards your five you need. Again, that should be out of the way in one game, actually, guys. Two at the most. Your bronze camo. This is now getting two rapid kills five times. And again, with the P, um, I was thought I was on the, fir the first uh, river then, but this is actually for the, the, what, the 1911 that we're talking about today, isn't it? I'm getting so confused with all these weapons. There's so many of them that were done so far. And um, yeah, rapid kills, I'd recommend, you know, there are some good maps for this. The Ardennes map is good. Um, the Point to Hawk map is good, what I'm showing you here. This is the time to be leery, guys, when you're going for the rapid kills. Just get stuck into the enemy spawns. Use the best and the advantage of your division that you've got and your energetic perk. Play the game, play domination, get those extra points, run into your, your spawning areas, and just get those rapid kills out of the way quick. Again, rapid kills should only take you one game, two games at the most to get those five that you need. Bloodthirsties. I love getting bloodthirsties. I'm going to show you a few clips now on how you can get bloodthirsties easy. But again, this is where now you can select the tactics that you want to play. You can camp while getting bloodthirsties easy if you want to. You can move around the map. Again, you can play the game domination to your advantage and get kills while enemy are trying to steal your point, while they're trying to take them, while you're trying to capture them. And it's up to you the way you get bloodthirsties, guys. I tend to move my way from my side spawning area up to the enemy spawning area and pick off the kills as you make your way there. And by the time you're in your spawning area, you're nearly up to about the fourth or fifth kill anyway. But it's very easy doing this. Remember, the best thing of all is that the vision that we've selected, you're going to be always invisible on the map. And we're also going to use that energetic basic training perk to get into our location where we need to be quick. But we're not stomping around with our big black boots. We can actually come up behind the enemy and move very freely around. It's very rare that we're going to be spotted by the enemy. And as you can see, you can get the five kills, you can go on. But remember, if you do go on, other than the five kills you need for the bloodthirsty, it's not going to work because it won't be classed as another one towards the five that you need. Remember, all five kills need to come from the 1911 pistol alone. Try and deselect if you can your grenades or tacticals if you've got them, because if you did get a kill with any explosive device other than your 1911, then it won't be registered one towards the five you need. The bloodthirsties should come very easy. I can normally get bloodthirsties out of the way with the tactics and with the division, all that that I've selected for you and recommended, out of the way in about one, two games again at the most. Make this easy, guys, for yourself. It depends on what players you're playing as well. If you do sometimes find you're up against, you know, really good players, you can see they're taking advantage of the game and they're winning and they're killing all your teammates, then take the standoffish approach. Be a little bit more, you know, camping positions, that kind of thing. Just kind of, you know, get yourself locked down in a position, kill an enemy, move slightly to another location just around the corner and watch for them to come in to try and kill you in that, you know, camping location, but keep moving all the time. It's very rare that I stand in one position for far too long, like here. This is the one where the enemy were very, very much in control of the game. And I'm just sticking down this end that I know they're going to be spawning from. And again, I'm just going to pick them off one by one. But I'm going to stick around this little location. It just makes it easier. You don't want to go out too much in the open, especially with the pistol. If you have got big long range maps where enemy can take you off with sniper rifles. But keeping close quarters, guys, you'll find that the five kills will come. Because the enemy will try and come back to the location where you are. And while they do, you can actually get that kill and get your five kills you need. There you go, guys. That's the gold camo for the 1911. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you have, please leave a like. Please don't forget to subscribe. I'm now going to work the last pistol on this to get it to diamond. And then I'm going to get the chrome camo as well, guys, because I've got all World War II weapons at diamond so far. So can't wait to make that. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next video.